So the drop down menu is exactly what it sounds like. And it's similar to multiple choice. You just pick whichever choice you think is the best. Now, after drop down menu, let's make this one required. Let's go to another question. And now we will do a linear scale. I use this one often. Linear scale is great if you if you want um, them to judge things on a scale of one to five, one to ten. So let's make a question. How, on a scale, how much do you like fish? Okay. And we're gonna do on a scale of one to ten. And one label we'll put, I hate fish. And on a 10 label, I love fish. And there you go, that's linear scale. Okay. Okay. Okay, now we're going to add another question. This time we'll do a, let's see, we do a grid, multiple choice grid. So you can say, how much do you like the following? Okay. So column one will be um, celery, column two, ribs, and then for, um, actually, let's change that. Let's say row one would be celery, two, ribs, three, lettuce, and four uh, candy. Okay, and we'll put column one, I hate it. Column two, it's okay. Column three, I love it. Now, watch what that looks like. That's how it looks like. These are the rows, these are the columns. Okay, that's how it's gonna look like. And let's say we wanna move this question. Drag it all the way down. As far as you want to. Okay. And then lastly, you can ask a date and time question. Month, day, year, and also time. But we're not even gonna do that, so we'll delete that. So that, that's how you create a form and create questions. Now, let's look at the other options. We already looked at the theme. Let's look at preview. If you click preview, this is what the form is going to look like, look like for students who are filling it out. If it's a star, that means it required. So they put their name, ice cream. Let's put Bill Smith, blah, blah, blah. For uh, summer plans, okay. Check all the foods that you like. I like chalk and Doritos. Here's the drop down. And here is. So now I'm going to press 
submit. Okay, let's go back to the form. Settings is very, very important. Who can respond? Do you want anybody to be able to take this form or do you want people to be signed into your school's domain name to take the form? That's a question you have to answer yourself. Most of the time I have it set so the students have to sign in to their school accounts. In this particular case, it's called Malik Walsh at Tech Services. That's the name of the school. If you click that one, it gives you further choices. The other choice is you can automatically collect their name just in case you don't know who's taking it. It'll automatically uh, collect their name when they submit the form. And you can also choose to have them only submit the form once so they can never retake the test. Um, you can also have it where you edit the message after they press submit. You can write, thank you for taking the test. That's the message they're going to get after they submit it. Also, after they submit it, you can let them submit another response, a link to that, but then you'd have to uncheck that to do that. You can do a link to edit their response, their original response, or a link so they can see a summary of responses. Okay. And you can also have them show the progress bar at the bottom of the page as they're taking it, and you can have them sh shuffle the question order. So I'm going to take it again. Just so you can uh, see how it works. Notice that the question order is now shuffled. And now they can get a copy of their responses if they want. After I submit it, they can see previous responses. They can edit their own response or submit another response. And these are the previous responses. A nice summary of each question. What is your favorite food? Choose all the food you like. And this is perfect for getting quick feedback. A nice little either pie graph or bar graph is shown for each summary. So in the next tutorial, we're going to go over how to share this with students and how they and really delve into responses a little bit more. Hope you learned something.